Hello, this is Tony Blazer for the Motocross Vault presented by Blinzall. If you're in the market for some high-quality racing oil for your two-stroke or four, make sure you go to Blinzall.com and use our discount code VAULT20 to save 20% at checkout. Thank you for all the support. Hey, I'm Steve Mathis. Welcome to Tony Blazer's Motocross Vault. Hello and welcome back to the Motocross Vault. My name is Tony Blazer, and what this video is going to cover is a look back at the history of Yamaha's open class four strokes, starting with the 1998 Yamaha YZ400F, the machine that some people would lament was the death of motocross. I think most people would realize now that it was certainly a major turning point. I love two strokes. I love four strokes. Any kind of off-road machine is cool. Someday I'm sure we'll probably all be riding electric machines, but this was a major turning point in the sport when Yamaha introduced this machine. And what this video is going to cover is the evolution of that bike from 1998 through the current 2022. I'm not going to get into hugely in-depth on each year. I have many more tests if you look at some of the other uh, videos I've done where I get into individual models. This is just going to be a brief overview of what they changed every year, uh, year over year, in terms of the YZ400, then the 426, and eventually the YZ450. I've had a couple of these motorcycles. I've ridden a lot of them. Uh, they're awesome motorcycles, some better than others, certainly. And what this video is going to talk a little bit about what they changed each year and maybe a brief overview of what people thought in general of each model. Uh, if you like this sort of thing, make sure you check out some of the other videos I've done. As I said, I've done many other individual uh, reviews, in fact, one including on the original 1998 YZ400F a machine that uh, certainly uh, was a game changer at the time. If you'd like to support what I do, I have Motocross Vault merch available, including a uh, YZ250F design that somebody asked me to do. I put it in the back of a uh, pickup truck here. I have several other Honda, Kawasaki, Suzuki, KTM even uh, designs in my Teespring store. And if you're looking for something motor related and you'd like to support my channel, I'd love you to take a look and see if there's a poster, sticker, or a shirt that might uh, fit in your closet. I'll put a link in the description below and also a card here in the video. So here, without further ado, is the history of Yamaha's open class four-stroke racers from 1998 through 2022. Here in 1998, we get the machine that started it all, the first Yamaha YZ400F. Now, in 1997, Doug Henry had raced a works version of this machine and actually had won a Supercross race in Las Vegas on it, which was just pretty mind-blowing at the time. I remember when I first heard he was going to ride a four-stroke, I thought that was kind of crazy. I mean, you had a few guys like Lance Mail riding four-strokes. Then, of course, you had the occasional guy we'd always laugh at at the track riding some XR600 or maybe a Husaberg or something like that. But pretty much anybody riding those bikes, we always thought they were kind of like, you know, kooks or vet riders or something. We didn't take four-strokes seriously. I love four-strokes. I've had several XRs over the years, you know, ATVs. They're great, fun motors bulletproof easy to ride but none of us ever thought of them as you know quote unquote the most high performance certainly for motocross at least you know in the desert and stuff the four strokes were very competitive but on a motocross track you know unless you're going to ride in europe and the gps or something there weren't a whole lot of guys out there on four strokes in the mid 90s so when doug henry came out with this yamaha it really was pretty mind-blowing and the fact that the very next year they came out with a production version that was even more amazing uh while the uh, original YZM and the YZF, you know, share some of their, um, I guess, basic thought behind the machine in terms of the engine design and what have you. There's actually not a lot in common. If you look at the YZM and the production machine, they are completely different motorcycles. The frames are different. The engine's very different. Uh, they're both four strokes. But other than that, there's not actually not a lot of translation that the works bike did not become the production bike the next year. They were clearly on, you know, maybe similar paths, but divergent paths toward uh, production. Now, this 1998 bike was a just a mind-blowing machine at the time. Again, most people were thinking, you know, four strokes or play bikes. Uh, the open class was kind of dying off. The Yamaha and Suzuki had both stopped making uh, 500 two-strokes by this point. And you had Honda and Kawasaki still building 500s, but they were, you know, ancient bikes. And there just wasn't a whole lot of innovation in the open class, uh, aside from maybe KTM's 360, which was really kind of a niche product. But this Yamaha really brought the latest in technology back to the open class. Um, basically, everybody now rides open bikes. The 450s are really just, you know, big, powerful 500s like the two-strokes where they're just easier to ride. And the Yamaha brought the civility of that four-stroke power band to the open class with modern suspension, modern chassis design, more up-to-date ergonomics. And it was a revolutionary machine. Now, this first 400, it was not a real powerhouse by any means. It had a 399cc uh, five-valve Genesis head, uh, designed based on the road racing machines at the time. It was a much different kind of a 
theory behind making power than the typical four strokes at the time. It wasn't a you know a chuggy style of power like you get in an XR600 or something. It was more like a revier style of power, more like you know what you would think of with a modern four stroke. It used a short stroke design, slipper piston, very small light piston uh, that was designed to rev quickly, and the motor built its power much faster. I remember the first time I rode this bike. I was just blown away by how smooth it was, how quickly it revved, and just, it was an amazing machine. The lack of vibration, everything about it was just so different. It also allowed you to take different lines. That's another thing I noticed when I first uh, rode my buddy's bike was how much front traction there was in this machine. The, the compression braking was pretty substantial on this first bike, and when you rolled off the throttle going into a turn, the front end dove, but it really let that front end stick like glue. And I remember I could take inside lines and it would hold uh, the front end on off cambers and stuff that, you know, my CR two-stroke just wouldn't do. And the bike really allowed you to uh, think differently on the track as to how you would attack it. Now, there were some issues, though. I had a real problem with stalling the bike. You, know, you come in and you try to brake slide it like you would a two-stroke and the motor would die. And if you did let it die, that was a major pain in the butt because this early YZF did not have a automatic compression release, meaning there was like a starting drill. You had to find top dead center. You had to bump it over. There was a compression release. It was a whole thing, and uh, it was a real pain in the butt if you did stall it. Uh, now, the bike itself used a, a really revolutionary carburetor. The, the Kahin FCR carburetor really brought uh, more modern performance to the four-stroke arena. It had a really snappy delivery for a four-stroke, quote-unquote. There still was that hiccup that you have. If you whack the throttle open too suddenly, you know, it didn't pick up like it would on a, like a CR125. It would actually bog a little bit, and that was always a little sketchy, especially if you were landing on a jump and trying to get onto another jump quickly. It was a little, little bit of an issue there. You always had to kind of anticipate it. It wasn't much of an issue outdoors, uh, but like on a Supercross track, it wasn't ideal for that. Uh, but even so, coming out of turns, I, many a times I'd, I'd grab a little bit too much, and the bike would kind of hiccup. Uh, companies like Boyson made some mods to the carburetor. They added a, a different uh, little fuel pump reservoir that would give it a little more fuel that seemed to help a little bit. But really, until fuel injection came along, it never really quite went away. So this bike certainly wasn't perfect. It was also very heavy. Uh, if you were coming off a two-stroke at the time, this first YZ uh, 400F, I'll be honest, it felt like a tank. Uh, I really noticed it big time in the air. It wasn't a bike that you could kind of throw around. If you got a little bit out of shape, the bike tended to kind of go where it wanted to go. Um, but it didn't, like I said, it was a great turning machine. You just had to be cognizant of the weight. Uh, if you got a little out of shape, it was kind of hard to bring it back. And the bike itself could be a handful in like sand and what have you. But uh, overall, it was an amazing motorcycle. The, the engine was super smooth. It wasn't, you know, by modern standards, it wasn't particularly fast. It wasn't any faster uh, than like a 250 two-stroke at the time. But it did have superior torque and it hooked up much better. Uh, this first YZ400 was pretty mellow, really. Again, there wasn't a lot of hit. It was just a smooth, long-pulling, fun machine to ride. I, I absolutely loved it. As soon as I rode one, I had to have one, and I set about getting one the next year in 1999. For 1999, the YZ400F was back with a list of refinements rather than a complete redesign. The bike, as I said, was all new the year before and had really turned out to be a huge hit for Yamaha. I think they really had no idea exactly how popular the bike would be, and it turned out to be a massive hit. These days, motocross action and other magazines sometimes lament the death of the two-stroke, but uh, if you look back at the magazines at the time, uh, they loved this thing. They they raved about how great the YZ400F was, and uh, riders like myself who rode them, we, we loved them too. Like I said, the weight was a problem. The thing was definitely a hefty-feeling machine, but the different style of power and the handling of the bike was, was really appealing at the time. I, I loved that part of it. It was a few quirks there to get over. Uh, now, one thing they did try to address here in 99 was the weight. They shaved a lot of little things off the motorcycle to try and be a little bit lighter. It ended up actually saving three pounds overall. They made the plastic thinner here for 1999. They also added an all-new rear hub that was a little lighter and smaller. The swing arm was lighter for 99. It was an all-new design that incorporated a new linkage that was supposed to provide a more progressive ride. Uh, the forks were upsized a little bit in terms of strength. They were a little more rigid in the front uh, to try and help uh, give the bike a little more precision handling. For me personally, I thought the YZ400 was a little bit softly sprung. Um, I've always been a guy, a larger guy. I was probably, I don't know, 200 pounds back then. And the bike felt a little bit too softly sprung with the stock suspension on it. And with that four-stroke dive, like I said, when you rolled off the throttle, that thing really uh, put out the anchor and it put a lot of pressure on those front forks. 
and it was pretty easy to bottom them out in my my experience anyway. Uh, the bike itself was not greatly changed for 99. Overall geometry remained unchanged. They did uh, upsize their axle slightly two millimeters uh, to add a rigidity to the chassis. They also upgraded the spokes and added Takasago Excel rims. Uh, for uh, 99 to make them a little stronger. They repositioned the foot pegs slightly to mount them 3.5 millimeters closer to the frame, and they upsized the rear rotor by 20 millimeters uh, to improve rear braking power in 99. Uh, now, this is the first YZ400F I had. I had ridden the 98, a buddy of mine had it, and just absolutely fell in love with it. Immediately wanted to get rid of my Honda, and ended up selling my CR and getting one of these things, and I loved the bike for the most part. As I said, the stalling was an issue. I had a couple of races where I did stall it, and it just drove me nuts. It really screwed your race up, because you had to find neutral, then you had to put it in uh, top dead center, then you had to bump it up. It was a whole thing, and it was just so annoying to deal with that. And it's funny, because you figure in, certainly... Um, in the 90s, you had plenty of four strokes you could just kick and go a Honda XR, while sometimes when they'd get hot, they'd be stubborn. I mean, heck, my 87 uh, Four Tracks 250X, you could just kick it and go. You never have to worry with this nonsense. So I, I never quite understood why Yamaha had this whole drill going uh, with this first generation YZ. And it really was probably the biggest hassle I had with this and the, the YZ 250F when it would come out was just starting it. The starting drill was a major pain in the butt. Um, for 99 here, they still had the manual compression release, still had the uh, starting drill, and it was super annoying. But uh, if you did do it, get it right, the bike was not a hard starter particularly. You just had to make sure that you didn't rush it. You had to be methodical and do the steps right, and it would fire right up. Uh, the carburetor did get a few new settings for 99. They were trying to get rid of that bog. Like I said, the in general, for a four-stroke, it was very responsive, but if you did whack the throttle open like you would on a, a two-stroke, you could definitely cause the bike to hiccup and die, and that was a major bummer again because then you have to deal with the starting drill. Um, overall, this 99 is very similar to the year before, just a little bit lighter and a little bit more refined in terms of the motor. Uh, great motorcycle overall, and really, considering how they had such a... Um, lead on the competition at this point. I mean, none of the other Japanese brands saw the YZ400F coming, and the fact that they hit it out of the park so well early on was really an amazing achievement for Yamaha. The fact that they basically had a bike that was totally bulletproof, too. I mean, if you'd had a lot of, you know, mechanical issues on these first YZFs, it might have torpedoed the whole four-stroke thing entirely, but these bikes are largely bulletproof. Uh, the five-valve heads have smaller valves. They tend to go um, less out of true than, like, the later Hondas would and stuff. It allowed them to rev higher. Uh, they also had a higher oil capacity. This bike carried the oil in the frame, uh, which really helped the overall capacity, helped keep the oil level higher as a little bit of measure of protection. Also helped to keep it cooler as well. So these bikes largely, you know, as long as you take regular maintenance to them, they were totally bulletproof. And I know myself included, a lot of people were concerned about that at the time. Four strokes are just so much more complicated. Yamaha really got it right from the very beginning with the YZ400F in terms of uh, the overall reliability of the machine, and I think that contributed a great deal to its uh, popularity. All right, for 2000, we get the first major redesign of the YZF. The all-new YZ426F is introduced here in 2000, and it is a major update in spite of the rather similar looks to 99. At first glance, the 99 and this probably look almost identical. The graphics are a little bit different, and Yamaha introduced a new front fender design here in uh, 2000, which actually I like. Uh, but other than that, they're visually almost the same, but there's a whole lot more going on underneath those uh, old bodywork and graphics that uh, really kind of belies how much different this bike is. Uh, the first thing they changed was they upped the uh, displacement from 399 cc's to 426, and that was done through an increase in the bore size. The stroke remains the same as the old YZ400, but they did make a larger bore here for the 426. They also upgraded the piston to be stronger with a one millimeter larger wrist pin. In the interest of increasing reliability and strength, they also beefed up the connecting rod with larger uh, width rod here for 2000, which was uh, going to make it a little more durable. The crankshaft was redesigned as well to be a little more durable and rebalanced uh, to make sure the machine was even smoother, which was one of the great things about these bikes. If you're used to riding a two-stroke, as I said earlier, when you get on them, and there's just almost no vibration at all. And I remember at the time that was one of the first things that really kind of shocked me about how different it was than riding a two-stroke 250 at the time. Uh, for 2000, you also get an all-new carburetor. The carburetor remains an FCR uh, carburetor, which was sourced from Yamaha's originally road race department. And uh, the original one was really a bolt-on directly from a road race bike, and it wasn't designed uh, to sit in the position it was on the YZF. 
Uh, so here for 2000, they come out with an all new uh, carburetor that's the same basic design, but uh, the body is no longer slanted. It sits straight up and down. It's designed more to uh, go with the actual shape of the motor and the YZF. They also added a hot start directly to the body of the carburetor, make it a little more easily accessible, and they increase the size of the float bowl as well uh, and uh, tweak the uh, fuel pump to hopefully get a little less of that bog going on. Again, every year uh, they're messing with that to try and get the bike to respond better. Uh, really wasn't, as I said, ever going to go completely away until they went to fuel injection. And uh, I think it was even more of an issue with this bigger motors than it was with the small. I had the original YZ250F, and I never really noticed it nearly as much as I did on these big bore ones. Um, a good friend of mine actually bought the 426 in 2000. I had my 99400. And uh, in spite of the carburetor differences, I think the 426 had a worse bog. At least his did. And I always had a little more of an issue with his. Almost one of the bars a couple of times on that thing, uh, grabbing a little too much throttle. So you kind of had to always be cognizant on those uh, those original four strokes. In addition to the increased displacement, you also got an all new clutch here in 2000, which was beefed up uh, with a larger set of clutch plates. You also have one more clutch plate, up to eight total plates uh, for 2000 for added durability. There's a new ignition this year to go along with the redesigned motor, and you get an all-new clutch lever as well, which incorporated a, a different lever ratio to be a little more smooth in action, and an on-the-fly adjuster, which was a popular aftermarket option here in 2000. Yamaha added it to their YZs. The uh, on-the-fly adjuster was a really, really nice uh, feature to add on this machine. Uh, the engine cases are slightly larger as well to accommodate the new clutch. And although, as a, again, if you look at a glance, it looks the same, uh, the cases are not uh, the same as they were on the YZ400. It's actually a little bit different overall. The transmission has uh, new ratios here. There's a narrower gap between first and second gear. And uh, that just, I guess, was to get the bike a little bit more snap out of turns. Uh, the motor itself is, as I said, much more grunty. It's 426 cc's. doesn't sound like a whole lot more than 400. Um, I know riding the bikes back to back, uh, it was a lot more powerful feeling. The original 400, smooth, uh, you know, almost like a really powerful XR, not anything that's going to jerk your arms out of your socket. And this 426, man, the first time I rode it, I was like, holy crap, the bike just hit like a ton of bricks. It was a gnarly power band and much more potent than my 400. Uh, I, I was really shocked how much the difference was. Obviously, there's more that goes into that, you know, tuning of the motor, cams, and everything else. But the bikes ran completely different. This 426 has a like a revier feel, a more quick to get into the power feel, and it um, just hits harder overall, much more potent engine. For 2000, to handle all that additional power, they added a larger radiator, which was 10% larger in capacity uh, to help keep the temperatures down. And they made some subtle tweaks to the exhaust system, mainly in the diameter of the tail section, which was increased to improve flow uh, for 2000. The bike itself, the chassis, is slightly different. The head tube was moved back 5 millimeters to shorten uh, the front of the machine a little bit. The wheelbase is also 5 millimeters shorter here for 2000. To cut down weight, they ditched the steel subframe of 99 and 98 in favor of an all-new aluminum one. Uh, again, the bike is not a real light machine. I think Yamaha rated it at 251 pounds, uh, and it felt like it. If you rode one of these bikes, they're definitely heavy. And with uh, KTM finally bringing a machine to the class in the form of the all-new 520, which was substantially lighter than this bike in spite of having a, a larger motor, um, the Yamaha was you know, starting to look a little portly. I mean, it was already heavy even compared to like a 500 two-stroke and with the uh, new competition coming it was definitely starting to look like maybe Yamaha need to rethink uh, getting the weight down a little bit although the all-new Cannondale uh, which was another competitor that made an arrival here in 2000 was substantially heavier than the YZ426 so I guess it was a matter of uh, depends on who you were comparing it to at the time uh, you got an all-new triple clamp here for 2000 which has a slightly larger diameter on the lower clamp for increased rigidity and also has a new bar position for 2000 they moved the uh, bar mountings 10 millimeter farther forward uh, to improve the ergonomics the rear shock here in 2000 gets a high and low speed adjuster uh, a very similar shock to what you would have found on the Kawasaki's at the time very well regarded this year in 2000. Most people, I think, like the suspension in spite of the bike's uh, hefty weight. Uh, the fork has some new settings as well. To They increase the compression overall to try and uh, keep the bike from sacking down the front under hard landings and also compression braking. As I said, uh, when you roll it off the throttle on these 426 and 400s, the bike really dived forward. 
And uh, I know with my 99, it really was uh, felt like your your head was right on the front wheel when that happened. And this uh, 2000, they made some changes to try and uh, balance out the chassis a little bit. I think overall, most of the magazines thought this 426 was a big upgrade. Uh, it was still a hefty machine, you know, definitely not a lightweight 125 by any means, but uh, it was faster and uh, definitely more serious, I think. It, the 400 almost felt like a trail bike compared to the 426. It just had, you know, a more hard-edged kind of a personality to the machine. And I think for motocross, most people thought it was an improvement in most every way. For 2001, the YZ426F was back with a list of fairly modest changes. The overall machine was not a whole lot different than 2000. This is very much like the 99 uh, versus 98 version of the YZ. One major change you do get for 2001 is a switch to titanium construction for the valves. Uh, the YZ426F still uses a 5-valve uh, Genesis head, but the valves are 40% lighter here by going to titanium. This also allowed uh, Yamaha to reduce the tension on the springs by 9%. They also redesigned the crankshaft slightly to lower friction in that. And this was all done to free up the motor, make it a little snappier or freer revving. Uh, here for 2001. Uh, you also get new settings for the carburetor and a slightly larger uh, fuel pump. Again, trying to get rid of some of that bog, the earlier ones it had. I've never ridden the 2001, but by reading the tests here in the magazines, it seems that it did make a pretty impressive difference. The motor had less of that stumble to it, and it tended to pick up uh, quicker out of turns and, and give a snappier feel. I thought the 2000 was pretty darn snappy already, so this 01 must really have a, a lot of snap to it. This is a machine that's very competitive versus the 520 in spite of the fact that the 520 has, you know, 100 cc's in displacement on it. You would think that would give it a huge disadvantage, but the Yamaha hit harder, revved faster, was just more snappy, and the KTM had more of a chugging delivery. I had a 2005 520, and I love that motor, but it definitely runs very differently than these Yamahas did at the time. This motor is a really aggressive motocross-style engine, and I think either you loved it or didn't like it. Um, as I'd said earlier, I, I preferred the the 99 style, the smoother motor to this 426, but I know a lot of people love the 426 for its uh, more aggressive power delivery. Here for 2001, you also get an all-new clutch, which has new side plates and springs uh, for increased durability, and the uh, transmission had a change in the shift lever, uh, which integrated the pin instead of a press fit pin on the old ones. I guess the, the press fit pin could come out and cause a failure, so they integrated it and made it all into one piece here for 2001. Uh, there's a new bend in the exhaust system. That was done not necessarily for power, but mainly to make it easier to access the uh, oil filter. Uh, the old ones, you had to kind of loosen the header pipe to get to it. It bent down, snaked right in front of where you needed to go. It was always a pain in the ass. And this new one, they changed the shape to make it easier to get to, which was uh, very nice. The ignition timing was updated here uh, for 2001 as well to improve starting performance. The bike continued to use the dreaded starting drill, but apparently it was a little easier to start this year. Uh, in the swing arm, you have a new material that allowed them to run with a uh, thinner wall for lighter weight. They're trying to shave any kind of little bit of ounce here or there to try and get the bike's weight down. It's continued to be very hefty, but they are making small changes there to try and make that better. Uh, the fuel tank here for 2001 gets a new fuel filler cap and supposedly was, I guess, sealed better and less likely to leak. On the suspension front, the 2001 426 gets some upgrades uh, to give it a little better bottoming feel. Uh, I know my my 400 definitely, it would feel like a metal-to-metal -metal clank when you uh, bottom that sucker out. And here for 2001, they upgraded the rubber bumpers in both the forks and the shock uh, to reduce a little bit of that uh, nasty feel when you used up all the travel. They also added a nylon spacer with around the springs in the forks to prevent a clanking sound. I never noticed the clanking, but I guess maybe some people did. The shock also gets a new bearing that is improved for greater durability as well. Um, the suspension, again, is well regarded in this era. I think most people like the way these uh, Yamahas handled. They had good suspension in the early 2000s, and the 426 uh, was a great handler in spite of its uh, rather substantial girth. Uh, the front brake is 5 millimeters larger. It went up to a 250 millimeter front brake and is a full floating design uh, here for 2001. And they redesigned the front master cylinder to be a little less complicated, easier to adjust as well. The drivetrain was reduced in size by one millimeter uh, to reduce weight, and the seat cover gets an all-new two-tone look. 
uh, here for 2001. Uh, and another weight saving uh, change, they uh, changed the plate that mounts the air box to the air boot from steel to aluminum in here in 2001. Overall machine, though, very similar to 426 in uh, 2000. Not a whole lot of difference there. I think the main thing was uh, the bike just felt snappier out of turns. I, I read in some of the tests, they said uh, the old bike felt like you kind of needed to add a two to the rear sprocket and this new one. Uh, basically the same motor felt like it didn't need that. It just had a little bit more response and it continued to be a very competitive four-stroke, uh, but there was a lot more competition getting ready to hit the track. For 2002, the YZ426F is back for its last season on the market. Uh, this is the year that Honda finally introduced their CRF450 and really gave Yamaha's first, I would say, legitimate challenge in this class. Uh, the KTM, certainly 520, was an excellent machine, but... KTMs in this era were not considered, I would say, quote-unquote mainstream, certainly not in the way the Japanese bikes were at this point. Uh, at that point, uh, Yamaha really was dominating uh, the standings in terms of the performance uh, end of the equation here, and certainly Yamaha was selling, I would imagine, many more YZ426Fs than uh, KTM was selling 520s. But here in 02, you get an all-new CRF that addresses many of the things that people did not really care for, um, on the YZ426F. Uh, so there's not a lot of changes this year. They have an all-new Yamaha on the way for 2003. So this last year is mainly uh, minor updates. You do get a new hot start lever, which is longer, a little stuff like that. The ignition mapping has changed here for 2002. There is a new swing arm design uh, that is uh, lighter once again and stronger for 2002. Uh, they revised the shock uh, linkage as well. They added a slightly longer shock here for 2002 and they had a new uh, linkage to accommodate that. Uh, the front hub is slightly larger uh, and uh, lighter for 2002. There's also a larger uh, rear brake rotor. It went up to 245 millimeters for 02. Uh, they switched the handlebar mounts a little bit again and moved them 10 millimeters farther forward yet once again to improve ergonomics. I imagine that's probably to allow you to get the weight a little farther forward uh, for turning. Um, there's also some revised carburetor settings yet once again to try and uh, get the best performance out of that big four-stroke. Uh, the Honda this year, it had... Uh, a much simpler starting design. This O2 still uses the starting drill. I mean, me personally, that is the reason I ended up buying the Honda this year. In 2001, uh, I had sold my 99 uh, YZ400 and bought the first YZ250F, a bike I loved the performance of. I thought it was super fun. It had a lot of the same things I loved about uh, the 400, but uh, had much lighter weight. It didn't feel heavy in the same way. It wasn't like a tank by any means. Not a powerhouse, but I was really impressed with how easy it was to ride. Great motor. But my only real problem with that bike was the starting. It was the most difficult starting motorcycle I have ever had in my life, that 01 uh, YZ250F. It, sometimes it would start first kick, and sometimes it would just refuse to start, and you could kick for half an hour. It just didn't give a crap. And I finally had had enough of it one day. I tried to start it to go ride and it wouldn't start. And you know what? I was ready to set fire to the thing. I was so pissed off. I ended up trading it into my local Honda dealer here in Leesburg and getting the all new 2002 CRF 450, a bike that I really loved. Having ridden the 99 400F and my buddy's 2000 426F, I will say that the first Honda, this 02, was not fast. Um, it was much more... I would say close to the uh, YZ400F's level of performance in terms of power. It was much more mellow. Uh, the 426F was a much harder hitting motor, uh, faster revving, just felt much racier, uh, more aggressive power band by far. Uh, the Honda was very mellow, but again, I loved the 99. I did not care for the 426 motor nearly as much. I thought it was a little too aggressive for my taste anyway, and I preferred the mellower delivery, and I loved that Honda. It was a kick-and-go affair like an XR. You didn't have to... Uh, fiddle with anything you just kicked it like you would a two-stroke and the thing fired right up uh, some people had some issues with uh, the turning on the honda and uh, you know put different clamps and stuff on i, I personally never had a problem uh, i thought both these bikes the the yzf the 426 and the honda were both excellent turning bikes they both had the benefit of that compression braking uh, weighting the front end and i think that made a huge difference of course all bikes have it now uh, but back then, you know, when you jumped off a two-stroke, uh, they freewheeled into the turns, and this thing, when you rolled up the throttle, it, it weighted the front end naturally, and really just allowed you to take lines you just couldn't take on a two-stroke and uh, make them work very easily. Uh, the 426, again, substantially heavier than this Honda. The Honda was a little lighter this year, and the 426 was still kind of a tank of a machine, but uh, I think a lot of people still liked it quite a bit. It was a very competitive bike. The suspension was very good this year. Uh, the overall bike, I said, was uh, a little more powerful, 
and certainly racier feeling than the Honda. But I think most people would say the Honda was probably a better motorcycle overall. Uh, it had less of that bog. I never had an issue with the Honda bogging like the, the Yamahas I had did. Uh, they didn't have that nearly as much of a hiccup. They seemed to have that sorted out. The starting drill was non-existent. And the overall bike, while slower, um, I think was hap- I was happier living with it. Um, but there were obviously a lot of devotees in the Yamaha motocross action. Love the 426. They thought it was a better uh, motocross bike in a lot of ways. Uh, but this is the last year for the 426, and you do get an all-new machine in uh, 2003 that makes quite a few significant changes to the Yamaha 4-stroke. For 2003, we get the introduction of the all-new YZ450F. Now, this engine and chassis are completely redesigned. The motor does look similar. It's certainly of the same lineage as the original two generations, but it is a completely new motor uh, from top to bottom. Uh, The engine is stroked again. They did not increase the bore size. So the bore size is actually the same as it was in the original 400, but they once again stroked it to give it a, a little more displacement. Now it went from 426 cc's to 449 here for 2003. You get an all new Uh, oil system that reduces the oil tank capacity by 500 uh, cc so went from 1700 cc to 1200 cc that was done to both lower the center of gravity uh, by reducing the size of the tank and also lower the overall weight of the machine this new bike is a whopping 13 pounds lighter than the uh, 426 so it is a huge difference Uh, and they took a little bit of weight out of all kinds of components here in 2003 uh, to try and get the weight down which obviously with the honda uh, coming into the market and the much lighter ktm as well yamaha was pretty cognizant that they were a little bit out of step with the current models in terms of overall weight and they did a lot of stuff here in 2003 to try and get the bike down to a more comparable fighting weight Uh, the engine is uh, uh, slightly smaller overall they even though the displacement's higher uh, they shrunk the size of the head to make it lighter in weight they reduced the size of the valves as well to save weight the crankshaft is lighter the piston is seven percent lighter they did all kinds of little stuff uh, tweaked uh, pretty much everything on the motorcycle to try and get as much weight out of it as possible now one of the more controversial things they did to reduce weight here in 2003 is the deletion of a fifth gear. Uh, the previous YZFs were five speeds and here in 2003 they go to a four speed transmission. Now if you're just going to motocross the bike that's probably not a huge concern but if you had any intention of off-roading it or doing a little bit of both uh, that definitely limited its appeal. In fairness, Yamaha did have a WR450 if you were looking to do more of an off-road machine. Uh, obviously, you'd go that route. But if you wanted to do an all-bike, and I, I, me personally, I always had uh, my motocross bikes. I like to be able to do a little bit of both. It definitely limited its appeal, at least in that range. Uh, you get an all-new carburetor this year. They moved the hot start to a trigger on the handlebar. That made it much more convenient to get to in the heat of battle. And even more importantly... Yamaha finally added an automatic decompression system to the YZF, so you no longer had the dreaded start drill. You could just kick in and go like the Honda. Uh, This is a huge improvement, probably the single best thing, in my opinion, they added to the YZF in this era. Uh, The bodywork is all new this year. The uh, seating position is flatter overall. The tank is slightly smaller as well. and a little bit lighter. Ten, I think they said it saved 10 ounces uh, changing the tank design. The exhaust pipe moves from steel to titanium with this redesign. And the all-new silencer is larger overall with a titanium end cap uh, on the 450 here. And it is a massive silencer. And this is the days before uh, they outload the Stinger. So that thing is massive on this bike. The bodywork, as I said, is all new. The seat is very hard and thin. That's one thing I, I know from sitting on these. Man, that seat was uh, felt like a piece of brick when you sat on it. And you definitely noticed that. Although it is a little easier to slide forward than it was on the old machine. The frame is new as well. It has a slightly thinner uh, piping throughout to reduce weight. Uh, They also repositioned the oil plug from the top of the frame to a little lower on the frame. As I said, they uh, made the tank internally in the frame a little smaller and repositioned it to be lower on the chassis to lower the center of gravity. They tapered the steering head here for improved rigidity and reduced weight. And the swing arm is also new uh, with a taper design that was designed to be lighter. Uh, even the chain slider was 25 grams lighter. They really tried to take every little thing and look at it and figure out how they could save a little weight on this motorcycle. Uh, in terms of performance, this is a very gnarly machine. Uh, my best friend ended up buying uh, the YZ450F in 2004, a very similar machine to this, and it was one of the fastest daggum machines I've ever ridden. It was gnarly compared to my Honda. Uh, definitely ate a lot of power out of this bike. It really has 
um, taken what the YZ426 did and made it even more uh, pronounced. Uh, I always found the four speed a little bit hard to figure out what gear I should be in, but the motor certainly had plenty of power to pull the wide spacing gears. So depending on what you're going to do with the machine, uh, I don't think it was too much of a hindrance. In terms of overall performance, it was a much more racing machine than the Honda. Again, the Honda is mellower, smoother, easier to ride. This Yamaha is hard hitting. It runs much more like uh, a traditional open class bike. It has a really strong hit, fast turnover. I mean, if you grab a handful of, on this thing, it's going to spit you off. It's actually kind of intimidating to ride, to be honest. So I always thought these, uh, this generation YZF was pretty uh, gnarly overall. Uh, but the bike was certainly a good motocross bike. The overall machine, though, was a very, very competitive bike. Uh, Honda, I think, again, was uh, the pick by a lot of people because of its ease of use. But if you're looking for the hardest core uh, motocross machine in the 450 class in 2003, you probably wanted the YZF. It was a nasty motorcycle that demanded skill and a fair amount of talent to use the most of its potential. Uh, but you know, if you if you were man enough, it was certainly uh, plenty plenty of performance on tap in 2003. For 2004, the YZ450F was back with only a very small list of updates. Uh, in terms of overall reliability, the bike was still the most reliable of all the 450s. That's one thing Yamaha did right, as I said from the beginning. These bikes were bulletproof, and while the new Hondas were excellent motorcycles, they had much more issues with valves than these Yamahas did. The 5-valve uh, lightweight Genesis head just tended to be more reliable overall. They needed less fiddling and maintenance, and they also carried more oil in the engine. So even with the reduced oil capacity, uh, these were still much more oil capacity than you would have found in the Honda, which had a separate chamber for the transmission and the engine. While that was a cool idea, it left you less uh, room there for error if the oil level got a little low. Uh, so these Yamahas were great bulletproof machines, and they just did some fine-tuning here for 2004. Uh, they changed the clutch basket to be a little less chattery uh, and give it a lighter feel. They also rerouted the clutch cable to have a lighter pull. Uh, they had a new uh, thinner throttle cable, uh, which was lighter in weight and also supposed to improve feel. And they changed the oil hose uh, lines from steel to aluminum to reduce weight. You got a redesigned master cylinder and an all-new set of triple clamps up front to accommodate the larger 48 millimeter uh, forks for 2004. They were updated and larger by 2 millimeters than 2003 and had a new cool uh, gold coating on the fork, which is usually the easiest visual uh, difference you can tell between an 03 and 04. If you look at them, the, the gold forks kind of give it away. Uh, there was all new tires. They added some new Dunlop tires this year and a new hydraulic uh, fork bottoming system and heavier fork springs in the new larger forks. Uh, the foot pegs this year are lighter. They are made of titanium. Uh, which is obviously pretty trick stuff. It was nice that they came stock with them here in 2004. They also changed the fork guard collar slightly to save weight as well. Uh, this bike is actually the lightest of all the th big three. It was actually went from the heaviest to the lightest bike. It's one pound lighter than the Honda. Uh, it's a really good motorcycle in a lot of ways, but it's a handful. Uh, interestingly, reading the test, they said it's actually a little more mellow than 03. As I said, I'd ridden the 04 quite a bit. Uh, my buddy Jamie had one, and that thing was a handful. It was a scary bike. Um, I rode it compared to both the 02 uh, CRF I had, and then when uh, the year after this, I ended up getting an 05 CRF 450. And this uh, Yamaha was faster by a good bit than both, and uh, much gnarlier. It was kind of a handful of a machine, in my opinion. Uh, the bike's feels like it sits tall too. This bike has a tall flat layout and you feel like you really sit on top of it. And uh, in spite of being the lightest of the three, it felt the heaviest on the track. And a lot of people commented on that. It was just a kind of a manly machine. The suspension works well, but it's, you know, stiff suspension, hard hitting motor, uh, aggressive power band, just made for racing first and foremost. Um, the four speed drove Myself and uh, my buddy Jamie Crazy, anytime we tried to ride it anywhere other than the track, it made the bike just terrible on the trails that I have at my house. It was always uh, kind of a pain in the butt with that. I hated the four-speed transmission. Definitely, uh, I would never have wanted to buy the bike myself just for that reason alone, just because it limited its appeal for what I wanted to do. I'm sure a lot of people who just raced motocross with it uh, didn't notice the difference, but uh, for me personally, it was kind of a deal breaker. I always felt like this bike was just a little too aggressive for me. And uh, while it was still a very, very competitive motorcycle, uh, I personally felt more comfortable on the Hondas and the Sierra. For 2005, the YZ450F is back with the 
last of its updates in this cycle. Uh, the 2003, 4, and 5 uh, were very similar machines, and they don't look a whole lot different on the track. Uh, this 05 has a little update to the strobe graphics, but cosmetically it's really not a whole lot different than the previous two years. Uh, internally, there's a few minor changes that ended up actually equaling some pretty significant uh, difference in the personality of the machine on the track. Uh, visually, you get a Rinthal bar this year. This is the first year they went to aluminum bars. The Japanese are finally getting with the program there. Um, other than that, like I said, it doesn't look a whole lot different than the year before. Um, the motor is tweaked this year. They have a new head with um, some internal porting changes aimed at smoothing out the power. Uh, they also made some carburation changes. Same reason, trying to smooth the power out. Uh, as I said, in 03 and 04, the bike was extremely potent, hard-hitting. A lot of people thought the bike was maybe a little too brutish. Um, and that's why, you know, with the popularity of the Honda and its kind of smoother delivery, Yamaha, I think, was trying to basically take some of that snarl out of the power band here in 2005, make the bike a little easier to ride. They also made some changes to the ignition, adding a new curve to that, and they made some changes to the air boot as well to allow a smoother flow of air into the motor. The fork is all new. It's a still a 48 millimeter fork, but they went to a uh, fork similar, although it's a Kiaba, similar to the, the uh, Showa twin chamber design that separated the air and oil, and it uh, definitely made a difference in performance. Pretty much everything I read about this 05 said the fork was much improved this year. Uh, it had a much better performance overall. The shock was well liked. Uh, there's a new swing arm this year as well. They keep kind of tweaking that year over year. Uh, basic bodywork, though, is just the same. The bike has the same ergonomics. Uh, kind of that same sit on top feel that the previous bikes had. Seems that some people liked that, some people didn't. I never felt particularly comfortable with it, but um, I know a lot of people do like this this overall design. One more interesting change for 2005 is the rerouting of the brake hose. Uh, Motocross Action always said that there was a patent uh, Honda had on running the hose directly to the caliper. I'm not sure if that's the case, but whatever the reason, in 2005, Yamaha finally went with the direct routing, so they no longer had to route the hose underneath the fork and back to the caliper. Uh, this was done, obviously, to simplify things, and at least in theory, it would provide a more uh, firm feel at the lever with a shorter hose. I'm not sure what, what performance gains it got, but it certainly simplified packaging here for 2005 on the brake routing. On the track, the new power band was much mellower. It came on a little sooner with less hit and uh, still pulled into a strong mid-range and top end, but because the power band was fuller, there was less of that uh, sudden explosion of power, and the bike was still plenty fast, but definitely easier to ride. I think most people, at least the tests I've uh, read, like the new power band and thought it was, uh, you know, certainly better for the masses. I'm sure there were some really fast guys like a Timmy Ferry or somebody that might have preferred the old power band, but I think the average rider probably was a little bit intimidated by the, all the hit the old motor had. And this 05 version is a little smoother. still handles very well. All of these YZ450s in this generation were excellent turning bikes. Good stability. Good handler other than the fact they felt a little tall and heavy. Um, that was just more of a perception thing. In terms of actual handling on the track, they were solid handlers that I think most people like quite a bit. The suspension performance, as I said, was very good this year. Uh, Honda actually had a very good suspension package here in 05 as well, and uh, both of them were rated pretty much similarly on the track. When I looked at the shootouts, uh, one wasn't appreciably a whole lot better than another. Uh, this bike was much more competitive, I think. Like I said, the previous two years, most people had picked the Hondas the better machine in terms of uh, appeal to the masses. Uh, the Yamaha was a little more hard-edged, but this new kind of gentler version of the YZ450F, I think, had a little more uh, broad market appeal. And I think this is probably the best liked of this generation of the YZFs. For 2006, the YZ450F was back with a complete redesign. This is a ground-up redesign. Literally, the only thing that it shared with the 2005 model was the hubs. Other than that, Every piece of the YZF was tweaked in some way or completely redesigned. The frame this year goes to an aluminum design, and it is interesting that it is a very unique, it's not like the cookie cutter kind of Honda clones that uh, Kawasaki and Suzuki were using here in 2006. Um, it is a very unique design uh, built out of three different types of aluminum. It definitely has a unique look that uh, was uh, kind of set the Yamaha apart in terms of appearance from the other brands at the time. The engine is all new this year. Uh, again, it is the same basic design, but they tweaked everything. The engine cases are all new. They moved the oil tank from the frame to the engine that lowered the center of gravity on that. Um, the cylinder, the carburetor, all that is new this year. The porting, the connecting rod, the counterbalancer, everything is new this year uh, for 2006. The motor itself is 
a really awesome engine. Uh, Motocross Action, they raved about how much they loved this engine. It was faster than the 05, but not nearly as kind of gnarly as the uh, earlier versions. And kind of hit that sweet spot where the bike is plenty fast, but not so crazy fast that people are intimidated by it. They also brought back the five-speed transmission this year, which was a, a big boon, I think. Again, if you're racing only motocross, maybe you didn't mind the four-speed, but me personally, I always felt it kind of limited the bike's appeal, and the five-speed certainly added to the versatility of the YZ450F. Uh, this machine, I think by most people's standards, was a pretty good handler, although I think there were some nitpicks here with the uh, handling. Some people didn't care for it as much as um, the turning on it as much as the old bike, but uh, the ergonomics are certainly improved in my opinion. Uh, the bike sits lower in terms of the seating compartment. They made the rider compartment more compact. Like I said, on the uh, previous version, the 05 version, you kind of sat on top of the bike. It always felt like you were on top of this big, tall, flat board in this 06 model. You kind of sit more in it. Um, and I think a lot of people liked that at the time. This is also the first year for the SSS forks from Kiaba, which are just an awesome set of forks that are still found on Yamaha's to this day. They, uh, when everybody went to air forks a few years back, Yamaha stuck with these forks and they have proven to be a winning design that continue to impress on the track even to this very day. Um, you have an all new shock here in uh, 2006 as well. Uh, that was basically a work style shock had an 18 millimeter shock shaft which is two millimeters larger than the year before and it uh, allowed the bike to have awesome uh, ride on the track motocross action just raved about how great this bike was they picked it as the best uh, 450 here in in 2006 and that's saying a lot because you have an all-new kx 450 this year the hondas in this era are phenomenal machines as well i had a 2005 honda crf 450 and it was a really really great machine and uh, I think uh, this Yamaha was a big improvement in pretty much every way. You also get a anniversary edition. I think this might be the first year where they did any alternate uh, graphic designs on Yamahas. And you see it more now. Obviously, you have the factory editions and the monster editions and all these different versions you can get. But uh, this was pretty novel in 2006. Uh, you could get the anniversary edition for an additional $200. I love the looks of this yellow YZF450. I just thought it looked awesome. I always uh, liked the yellow Yamahas from back in the day. And if you were somebody like me that grew up with uh, YZs being yellow, this was a cool throwback that I think really uh, kind of set the bike apart. And for my money, at least, it was worth the 200 bucks. For 2007, Yamaha loaded up a fairly modest set of updates to the YZ450F. Cosmetically, they added a new white version, which was the alternate for 2007. This was $150 more than the standard uh, blue YZ and uh, was, I guess, imagine a fairly popular option. People like having options to change the look of their bike. And it's pretty cool that Yamaha was doing this pretty much every year. Um, I always thought the blue probably looked a little better than this, and I like the yellow much better than this, but the white was definitely a pretty clean look overall. Mechanically, there's not a lot of uh, major changes to the motor, but they did tweak a few things in order to try and make the motor a little quieter and a little more mellow. Interestingly, um, the outlet of the exhaust is shrunk down considerably here in 2007. Uh, Yamaha was concerned with making the bikes as quiet as possible in this era. And this 2007 is definitely a much quieter. It was by far the quietest of all the 450s this year. They went to a cauliflower style wave rotor front and rear here in 2007. Uh, they updated the graphics, of course. I'm not a huge fan of these graphics in general. This is probably my least favorite of these designs, but it's not a terrible looking bike overall. Uh, there is a new ignition map. They also made some chassis changes here uh, to get the bike to turn a little better. Uh, they lengthened the shock slightly for 2007 and also steepened the steering head angle as well. They also raised the bars slightly. The Pro Taper bars are a little bit taller here for 2007. There's not a whole lot of other major changes. Uh, little things like they added a new front brake lever. They uh, added braces to the uh, radiators and they lighten the counterbalancer slightly here for 2007. Now on the track, the bike was much mellower this year in 07. I, I personally like this quite a bit. This era of YZF was a pretty mellow bike. It was by far the slowest of all the 450s this year. On Dirt Rider's Dyno, it put out uh, a solid three horsepower less than the CRF 450, which was a uh, powerhouse here in this era of uh, 450 racing. And depending on your skill level, maybe that was a good thing or a bad thing. Again, I always liked my 450s more on the metal side. I wasn't looking to have my arms jerked out of my sockets. 
So I like that uh, smoother delivery, but uh, some people did complain that the 07 was a little too slow. The bike definitely was mellower overall. Uh, a lot of people also thought the bike didn't turn particularly well. Uh, I think even Grant Langston had some issues with it and did some tweaking at his works bike to try and get the bike to handle better. And I don't think that everybody had those complaints. You know, Motocross Action said it had a bit of a push. You read other tests and other people didn't complain uh, nearly as much. But this bike definitely... It was a little more polarizing than some of the early ones uh, in terms of the handling of the bike. Not everybody seemed to agree on, on how it handled. I think overall it was a good motorcycle. Uh, definitely not the unanimous choice that the 06 was where there was a lot more consensus on uh, what an awesome motorcycle is. Some of the changes this year, I think mainly the mellower power uh, probably put off some of the faster guys. But uh, it was still a very competitive motorcycle. And it w didn't take a lot to get a lot of that power back. If you open up the exhaust, put... Um, you know, one that was less restrictive on it. it definitely helped perk the motor up quite a bit. Uh, but, you know, for somebody like me that was riding, you know, off-road and at the track, uh, the quieter exhaust was probably a welcome change. After winning the 450 National Motocross Championship with Grant Langston at the controls, the YZ450F was back in 2008 with a list of fairly significant updates. The first on the agenda was a new frame that had quite a few updates to try and make the bike handle better. As I said, the 06 and 07 were a little bit polarizing. Some people loved the way they handled. Other people had issues with the turning. And Yamaha made several updates to the chassis to try and improve that. The new chassis lowered the steering head 5 millimeters and actually reduced the width of the frame spars to actually dial in a little more flex. They actually believed the chassis was a little too stiff in 07. And so they were trying to dial in a little more flexibility. This was something that was fairly common with the aluminum chassis. They were very stiff in general. And every year, a lot of the manufacturers would kind of go and tweak different parts of them to try and get a little bit better feel out of it. Uh, for 2008, you also get all new forks that were four millimeters shorter and new clamps as well that were designed to work with the new forks. Uh, all of this was done to... Uh, change the chassis balance and get the bike to turn a little better here in 2008. On the motor side, you get all new intake ports and a revised cam profile for the uh, intake and exhaust cams. You also get an all new exhaust, which actually is the first usage of a mechanical muffler on a motocross bike. Uh, now, I loved this muffler. It was super quiet. Uh, I had the same exact muffler on my 09, and I loved it because it allowed me to run basically a motocross muffler while riding off-road up at my parents' place. It was way quieter than my Honda. Uh, when I had my CRF, I would actually, I actually bought an exhaust off the X model and would swap them back and forth. But with these mechanical Yamaha ones, they were quiet enough you could get away with kind of running them and not driving the neighbors crazy. It was definitely a significant improvement in terms of sound, but it did choke off the motor quite a bit. The overall muffler was much lighter. It's much shorter too. It's like six inches shorter. It's a real short little thing. It's kind of a trick item. Clearly it wasn't optimal for power. They only used it here in 08 and 09. Uh, but as I said, I really loved it. I thought it looked cool too. And uh, the all new exhaust though was quieter. Uh, it has a larger head pipe to go with it. But I really think it mellowed the power out quite a bit. This engine, uh, much like the 2007, was uh, slow compared to its rivals. Uh, not everybody, as I said, you know, had a problem with that. But uh, certainly guys who were looking to be throttle jockeys might have wanted a little more pep from their 450 uh, in 2008. In addition to the frame changes, you had an all-new a set of foot pegs as well, which were 10 millimeters wider. They were really huge work style pegs, very trick. Uh, they made their debut in 2008. You also get a new set of uh, brake levers and a new front caliper. There was a lot of little changes here in 2008. And the bike's actually two pounds lighter than the year before, which is a significant savings uh, on a machine like this. The YZ450F in this year is actually one of the lightest machines in the class. And uh, Yamaha was doing a good job after having such portly machines early on. Uh, kind of coming in, undercutting its rivals in terms of weight in this era. As in the previous two years, the Yamaha's best trait was its suspension. Uh, the forks were rated uh, tops in the class. Yet again, uh, really great suspension overall. The forks and the shock were really well regarded. The bike, as I said, was a little slow in stock condition. And depending, again, on your skill level, that may or may not have been a hindrance. But uh, Motocross Action and other magazines definitely docked it for being uh, the mellowest machine in the class. Handling actually went, I think, a step back here in 2008. Uh, I don't think most people thought the bike was a particularly good handler in spite of the changes aimed at improving the turning. Many people still felt the bike had a bit of a push in the front end. Overall, it was a decent handling motorcycle that lacked the turning prowess of the Hondas and Suzukis of this era. 
For 2009, the YZ450F was back with a very modest list of updates. Uh, for my money, I will say the white version here in 2009 is my favorite. I like the red they put into it. Uh, overall graphics, actually I think the white version is better looking than the blue this year in terms of the graphic package stock anyway. Uh, both are still, you know, good looking motorcycles in my opinion. Now this is a bike I actually owned. I owned a 2009. I really love this bike. It was a excellent overall motorcycle. In fact, I'd say... Uh, maybe of the nearly 50 motorcycles I've owned over the years, it may be my favorite. It was just a great overall bike for me and my skill level for what I wanted to do, which was a bike I could take to the track to play around on, take on the trails, uh, do a little bit of both. And it was an awesome do-it-all uh, motorcycle. The stock exhaust this year is just like 08. It's very choked off. They made no changes to the overall motor this year other than some reliability mods. They uh, added an extra bolt to the stator, which was done for reliability reasons. But in terms of performance, uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, changes here for 09. They also updated the clutch uh, to be easier to work on and also added a longer shift fork for first and third gear to add durability and give a more positive feel. Uh, you get a new... Uh, black magnesium uh, valve cover, which matches the clutch and uh, ignition cover from the year before. I thought this was a good look. I, I definitely think the motorcycle, as I said, is a good-looking motorcycle overall. You have a new upper clamp this year that allows you to move the bars to give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of the ergonomics on the motorcycle. Uh, you also get a new clutch lever here in 2009. The rear hub is modified to be lighter. They also added an additional bearing, so it has three bearings in there for reliability, and it was a little bit lighter. It was uh, 265 grams lighter than the year before. The motorcycle is still very light. Um, this version of the YZFs in this era are very light motorcycles um, compared to its competition at the time. I loved this bike. As I said, the motor was very mellow, though. At the time, I was coming off my 2005 uh, Honda CRF, which was a gnarly fast motorcycle, and I much prefer the mellower power. I mean, I think in the mid range, this thing was down like five horsepower uh, to some of its competition. But for me, you know, obviously, I'm not you know Grant Langston. I wasn't out there trying to tear up the track or anything. So I, I, I love the power. I thought it was really, really easy to use, really mellow. And all my buddies who rode the bike loved it too. It was a great motorcycle. Excellent suspension. I think Yamaha really had the suspension on lockdown at this point. Those SSS forks were excellent, and the bike handled really well for me. Um, I People continue to have some complaints about uh, the handling of the motorcycle in general. Uh, they had a new swing arm this year, which was hydroformed, which was done to both slightly alter the weight balance of the motorcycle, and it was a little bit lighter as well. Uh, I think the bike handled well, but again, Motocross Action, some of their magazines sometimes complain that the bike had a little bit of a push to the front end, but I never noticed it. I rode the bike a lot on a track and in the woods, and I thought it was an excellent handling motorcycle. Felt very light, too, for a 450. Um, the bike was very nimble, in my opinion, but again, everybody has their own opinions about that. Uh, this is the last uh, year for this design, and uh, Yamaha just didn't put a lot of money into uh, major updates with an all-new machine on tap for 2010. In 2009, of course, you have an all-new Honda coming out, and then you know, Suzuki both had fuel injection, and this motorcycle is, I believe, the last one to use a FCR carburetor. Uh, I never had any trouble with the bog. By this point, I think most of the manufacturers had it pretty sorted out, and I never noticed any of that uh, nasty bog I used to get on the early four-strokes. And for that matter, actually, my CRF didn't do it either. So it really was much more of a problem early on. I think these last generation of carbureted ones uh, work pretty well for most things other than maybe Supercross. All right, for 2010, we have reached the major inflection point in the history of the Yamaha YZ uh, four-strokes. This is the all-new reverse-motored YZF450. This is a utter redesign of the bike from front to back. This is easily the biggest change since the introduction of the machine in 1998. Obviously, the styling is very different. Uh, that's probably one of the more controversial things about this motorcycle. I was never a big fan of this. In fact, I picked it as one of the top 10 ugliest motorcycles ever produced, but that's obviously a personal choice. I'm sure there's some people who like the look of the new bike, but I always thought it looked kind of weird and bizarre. That being said, the bike certainly was innovative in so many ways. Uh, interestingly, you get an all-new frame this year that actually is much more quote-unquote traditional. And most of this bike is very untraditional in its design, but the frame here is a bilateral beam frame, which is basically the same 
perimeter style frame that everybody been using since Honda introduced this in 1997. Uh, as you can see, it, it has a very uh, different look and a more conventional, quote unquote, conventional aluminum frame motocross construction uh, instead of the backbone, very unique style they'd use from 06 to 09. Uh, the motor is all new this year. Obviously, the most uh, noticeable thing is the cylinder is canted rearward, and that was done to centralize mass. Um, they also reversed the intake and exhaust, so this motor actually has the intake in the front and the exhaust in the back. And this was done to give a straighter shot to the uh, intake of the motorcycle uh, like you would have on like a street bike, like a road racing bike. And uh, that required a lot of repackaging and of everything on this motorcycle. You had a unique tornado style exhaust, Yamaha called it. Uh, this bike really is kind of a culmination of uh, some of the ideas that Cannondale had started in the early 2000s. Cannondale had tried to do a lot of what Yamaha's doing here, but they just didn't have all the bugs worked out of it yet. Uh, there were issues when you put the exhaust in the rear, you're going to end up with a much shorter head pipe, and that can affect the power characteristics of the motor, and Yamaha got around that by doing this longer twisting head pipe to give the pipe sufficient room to work its best. Uh, later versions of this would actually snake the pipe around the front, but this first one uses that tornado exhaust. Uh, the only real issue with that, obviously, is it definitely puts a lot of heat near the shock, uh, so that's definitely probably not the ideal design for that, but again, they are really breaking new ground here with this design. Um, the air box is moved up front to uh, where the gas tank would normally be, and that, again, is to give a straighter shot, more clean air into the motor. Uh, the gas tank is moved below the seat, the bike itself, as I said, is a very unique look to it overall. You have uh, the same suspension in terms of the SSS forks still used conventional. They weren't going to air forks uh, like most of the competition was getting ready to do here in the early uh, 2010s. Uh, they were sticking with what worked as far as that goes. You have a new shock this year to go with the new chassis. Um, pretty much everything on the motorcycle from the bodywork to every little uh, tiny thing on the motorcycle is all new. Radical redesign in that way. Uh, this is also the first year you get fuel injection on the motor. They also deleted the five valve Genesis head that had been in use uh, since the original YZF. Um, some people lament that in that the uh, the smaller five valve heads were uh, very reliable. They had tended to have less issue with uh, needing valve adjustments as often and what have you. But uh, Yamaha finally went to a new design here in 2010. Uh, it is a radical, radical redesign in every way. The bike itself, aside from the styling, there were still some issues with uh, the controversial uh, handling of the motorcycle. By reversing the motor and then changing the geometry so radically, it definitely uh, had a different feel than previous YZFs. Some people really had an issue with that. The motor also is extremely powerful. These uh, reverse motor fuel-injected YZFs, even to this day, are some of the most powerful machines in the class. And you put a lot of power into a chassis, and it definitely uh, makes it a little more difficult to get it to handle correctly. And that, I think that was the main uh, concern with these bikes was the handling. The, the engines never were down on power. I don't think too many people were saying, oh gosh, I need more power out of my YZF450, uh, unlike the 09 model, which was very mellow. These newer ones used a more conventional exhaust, and it just really was not lacking for horsepower. It just had uh, maybe some quirky handling that some people were okay with, some people had some issues with. Uh, certainly a step forward in terms of uh, pushing the envelope of design. I think even all these years later, the jury's still out on whether or not the reverse motor um, and then laying the motor back and, and changing all these radical uh, ideas about motor placement and chassis dynamics, whether it actually was a move in the right direction. But you can't certainly argue with the results in terms of horsepower that Yamaha's been able to make from these newer designed motors. For 2011, the YZF450 was back with a very minor list of updates. Cosmetically, the only change is a switch to the white plastic for the lower shrouds. Um, not a big difference, but I will say I do prefer this overall look. It kind of lightens the look of the bike. As I said earlier, I'm not a big fan of this design in terms of its appearance, but I will say the white shrouds do help slightly. Other than that, the only significant change is a change in the clutch actuation arm, which was designed to offer less free play at the lever and offer a slightly more positive feel. Uh, it really... Other than that, it's exactly the same bike as it was the year before. The motor was very powerful off the bottom through the mid-range. Uh, didn't have a ton of top-end power. Uh, if you look at some of the tests at the time, most of these early fuel-injected bikes uh, were super snappy, but they hadn't quite figured out how to get the same kind of uh, long, broad power that the earlier carburetor models had had. So you have the early fuel injection certainly offered better throttle response. You don't have to worry about them uh, bogging, uh, but it seemed like the manufacturers are still kind of trying to figure out how to get the best power
power band out of these motorcycles. A lot of people thought they were kind of herky-jerky and maybe a little bit more difficult to control than the old carburetor versions. Uh, but they would get that sorted out pretty quickly. Uh, so for 2011, you get minor cosmetic updates, the only minorest of mechanical updates, and it really is, other than that, exactly the same machine it was the year before. For 2012, you get another year of minor updates on the YZ F450. Uh, you get a new longer muffler. The muffler is 42 millimeters longer and has a 3 millimeter smaller core and was designed to meet a 94 decibel standard. Uh, you also have revisions to the fuel injection settings, which were designed to make the motor a little smoother off the bottom, a little torquier, uh, less herky-jerky. As I said, these early fuel-injected ones come on really suddenly, and a lot of people had some issues with that upset in the chassis balance as you rolled the throttle on. So they're trying to make them a little less jerky and a little more linear in terms of the power delivery. Uh, they also updated the ECU this year, again, to try and uh, kind of smooth out the power and lengthen the power, make it longer and smoother in terms of its overall power band. Uh, there's new settings for the front and rear suspension, which was already like one of the best setups in the class. These uh, bikes have great suspension. Uh, you have some new uh, Geomax M51 tires, and you have a new seat foam material, which was designed to be a little softer uh, here for uh, 2012. And cosmetically, the only major change is a set of black rims, which, depending on your opinion, may or may not be a huge improvement. Uh, I think black rims do look good on certain motorcycles, but of course... Uh, they look pretty crappy pretty quickly once you start having to swap out tires and nick them all up. Um, Performance-wise, this bike is a little bit easier to ride. Uh, I think most of the magazines thought the motor changes, even though the motor was maybe a, a little less powerful feeling, quote-unquote, uh, for 2012, the fact that it came on easier and smoother with a more rich power delivery, not such an on-off feel when you roll the throttle on, uh, made the bike easier to control and it was probably an improvement overall. Again, this is a polarizing motorcycle. Some people liked them, some people didn't, uh, but there was certainly no faulting the amount of power these machines made. For 2013, you get a very, very modest list of updates consisting of a black handlebar and a white rear fender. Literally, that is all they changed here for 2013 on the YZ450F. Uh, you have an all-new machine coming in 2014, so clearly they were saving their budget for the year after this. Uh, mechanically speaking, there are no changes. So if you loved a 2012 YZF450, you're going to love the all-new and more white rear fendered uh, 2013. For 2014, we get the first major redesign of the reverse motor era of the YZ450F. This bike is all new from the ground up once again. Uh, the engine is still the same basic reverse motor design, but it is, as I said, totally redesigned. You get an all-new top end, piston, the intake, the exhaust valves, ports, ignition timing, fuel injection mapping. Everything is new here for 2014. You get an all-new high-performance ECU, which was designed to give it a little better bottom-end torque, a smoother delivery, and also uh, have that power pull a little stronger on top and have a wider overall power band. Uh, the valve mechanisms for the cylinder and head feature new specs uh, that are designed to take a performance to a new level, according to Yamaha. The exhaust pipe this year, as I mentioned earlier, has a new design. They got rid of the Tornado design, which was kind of a... Uh, hack a workaround to the reverse motor in order to get enough head pipe length and this year they actually snake it all the way around the motor which is um, an interesting idea certainly uh, combated that uh, short header problem but it does make of course the exhaust uh, a little more complicated to remove you have a all new uh, wet sump lubrication system uh, this is designed to keep the piston cooler and eliminates the need for an oil tank and also reduce weight in the engine uh, you have a newly designed transmission and shift mechanism to provide quicker and smoother shifting under power Power. Uh, there is still a GYTR tuner kit uh, which can uh, remap the ignition if necessary, which was a nice little accessory that you could get for these fuel injected YZs. Uh, the frame is all new this year. It still uses the bilateral beam, the traditional perimeter design, but they did move the steering head 10 millimeters closer to the rider to try and make the bike feel a little more compact, uh, tighten up the handling. The previous design felt like a pretty large motorcycle. And I think here for 2014, they're trying to make the machine feel a little more uh, maneuverable. Uh, and it gives the bike like a smaller overall feel. The aluminum muffler is positioned closer to the machine's center of gravity, again, to try and uh, centralize mass. The front suspension still uses the spring fork. Uh, the KYB SSS fork is still in use, but it has all new uh, inner and outer tubes, which are designed to optimize suspension flex and new damping settings as well. Uh, the front axle is now... Uh, larger slightly for 2014 and they have an all-new bodywork of course front to rear 
The fuel tank is still uh, below the seat, but it is actually lower and uh, carries its weight a little bit farther back. The fuel pickup is actually behind the shock mount, which is interesting. Um, the airbox is redesigned this year to make it much easier to get to the airbox. The previous design, you had to take off the seat and the gas tank and everything to change the air filter. It's a real nightmare. Also, it was very loud. Uh, that's one weird thing about these reverse motor YZs. The airbox being up high, uh, you can hear a lot of that intake moan, and uh, that definitely uh, was probably something that probably put off some people at first. Uh, this new design is much easier to get to that uh, requires much less uh, removing of parts to get to the filter and it's better sealed as far as sound goes it's not as loud as the older ones the new graphics are more attractive in my opinion i will say this new bodywork is better looking still not my favorite looking machine by any means i always thought these yz's could be more traditional than they are but i think they're kind of going for a very unique look it's one of those kind of love it or hate it designs i was never a big fan but i'm sure a lot of people love the overall look you still get the choice of a white and a blue uh, design this year. Uh, Yamaha has the white and red combination or the Team Yamaha blue and white, uh, depending on what your uh, taste goes for. I think on the track, this turned out to be a much improved machine in a lot of ways. The motor uh, had a broader, more full power band. Uh, it's definitely a rocket. I know when Motocross Action tested it, it put out 58 horsepower, which was the most they had ever tested on a 450 machine in stock condition. The stock jetting, I think, was a little bit lean, but with the tuner, you could uh, kind of sort that stuff out. And once you got it uh, set up, the bike was just an absolute animal in terms of horsepower. Uh, handling, again, still kind of um, a hit or miss thing. Some people liked it, some people didn't. Um, the bike definitely has a unique feel that, uh, I guess, if it suited you, it was great. If it didn't, um, maybe you weren't as comfortable with this machine as some of the others. I think the 250F tended to not have as much of an issue with the handling, and I think a lot of it had to do with how much horsepower the engine make. I think this thing is just so damn powerful that if you have the chassis dynamics off even the slightest, the motor's overabundance of torque uh, can probably throw that thing out of whack as you you know come out of turns. But overall, a definite improvement in pretty much every way here in 2014. After a total redesign in 2014, unsurprisingly, the 2015 model is a minor update uh, overall in the YZ450. You get a set of black wheels this year. Of course, manufacturers love to do this, the old paint swap with KTM or the wheel swap with Yamaha. So for 2015, you get a black wheels. Uh, you get a gold chain. You did have uh, one little maintenance thing that made life a little easier here. You added the dunce fasteners to the airbox. So instead of having bolts uh, to remove the air uh, airbox to get to the air filter, now you have dunce fasteners. makes it a little easier to service the bike. You have new fork internals. Uh, the Kiaba SSS forks have new valving, stiffer fork springs, and a redesigned fork tube wall thickness uh, for more resilience, according to Yamaha. Uh, the rims are XL this year uh, with Geomax MX52 tires on them. Uh, there's a new mapping for the ECU, which was designed to be a little more uh, ready to go out of the box. Again, in 2014, some people had complaints with the bike coming a little bit too lean. So if you're in a climate that's a little colder, if you put in a different exhaust system on it, the bike was definitely way too lean. So the ECU was remapped this year to be a little more rich and a little better out of the box. They changed the throttle return spring uh, to have 20% lighter pull to make it a little easier when you twist the throttle. And they also have uh, new motor mounts this year. In uh, 2014, the motor mounts were aluminum. And this year, the lower motor mounts will move to a steel plate construction. This was actually done to dial in a little more flex. The gearing was changed slightly here for 2015. They went to a 48 tooth, uh, which was one tooth lower than uh, 2014. And the gear stop lever uh, was changed to a roller type here for 2015 to improve shifting. On the track, this turned out to be a fairly modest update as well in terms of performance. Uh, the new mapping was a little better out of the box. The bike was still an absolute powerhouse. Uh, not a big difference in terms of the way it ran. And the handling was slightly better, but again, uh, this is not an RMZ 450 by any means. The YZ in this generation is, you know, kind of a large feeling motorcycle that was uh, kind of unwieldy in some ways. Some people, again, depending on your riding style and what have you, didn't have as much of an issue with it. These aren't terrible handling motorcycles. They're certainly way better than some of the earlier YZs in this regard, but it's still a big feeling motorcycle. I think in spite of the fact that it's not like a ridiculously heavy motorcycle, it felt heavier than some of the competition just because of that uh, really powerful motor. seems like Yamaha was doing a lot with the mass centralization to try and minimize that feel, uh, but these motorcycles are pretty hefty, and definitely uh, having the reverse motor didn't make that big bike feel go away completely. 2016 is another anniversary year for Yamaha here. With the 60th anniversary models, you get another round of yellow alternate uh, appearance YZs. I love the yellow. 
Like I said, the 06 was one of my favorite looking YZs ever. I think it's a great looking motorcycle. And I think this 2016, while not as attractive as the 06 Anniversary Edition, uh, is a welcome change over just the plain white. Uh, the strobe graphic they put into the middle of the shroud, I think it just doesn't quite, you know, maybe kind of highlights the strange bodywork. Like, as I said, I'm not a big fan of the overall look of these YZs in terms of the bodywork. And while I like the yellow color, um, I don't think that the strobe design works particularly well here. But that being said, it's nice to have a little different look. And for 2016, you do get that yellow alternative. In addition to uh, the new graphics and new bodywork options, you have a all-new launch control system added here for 2016, uh, which would make it a little easier to get that big powerhouse off the line. You also get another revision to the engine mounts. This year, again, trying to tweak in the handling of the machine, get it to offer a little better flex. Uh, they also reshaped the swing arm pivot uh, on the aluminum frame to improve lateral rigidity this year. Uh, the foot pegs are moved slightly down 5 millimeters uh, to help lower the rider's center of gravity on the bike. And there's new triple clamps with a 25 millimeter fork offset to help improve front end feel. Uh, the new shock spring is also designed to work with some new suspension settings and provide a smoother ride here for 2016. Uh, there's a new brake pad material and an all new larger 270 millimeter front brake rotor, uh, which brings a welcome bit of stopping power to the big Yamaha. Another minor improvement they made here for 2016 is they once again uh, mess with the shift stopper uh, as they've done the year before to, to give a little smoother engagement and a more precise feel to the transmission. Uh, overall performance, not much change. The brake, they did say, made a noticeable difference on the track. The bike runs pretty much the same. There's a slight update to the cams for here for 2016 that was designed to give a little bit more low-end and mid-range torque. These bikes were certainly not hurting for power. That was never never the complaint. All these YZs are really loved for the suspension performance, and the motors are super powerful, but the handling, again, is a little more polarizing. Um, the changes here for this year don't really change the personality of the YZ uh, any great way, but the bike does handle a little better. Uh, I think some more sensitive people probably can notice the change. I've never ridden this generation of YZF myself personally, but uh, from reading the test, you know, like I said, it's one of those things that um, people either loved it or hated it at the time. I've never ridden this generation of YZF 450, but I think, you know, most people say they're pretty decent handlers here in the magazines and here for 2016. The subtle changes helped a little bit, but just didn't really change the overall personality of the YZF in any significant way. After a fair amount of updates in 2016, the YZF 450 was back with only some minor tweaks here for 2017. First thing you notice is there is no more yellow option, although I will say the white and red this year is actually pretty good looking. I like these graphics way better than the retro design the year before. I think it works better with the new school uh, body work. It's a pretty good looking motorcycle, actually. I think in this year I might choose the, the white and red over the blue. Overall, the motorcycle is almost identical to the year before. Uh, structurally, they didn't change anything major in the engine. There's an updated oil strainer to be a little more efficient. They improved the seal on the counter shaft sprocket and uh, updated the metal in the rear rotor to lessen the tendency of it to warp. Uh, they switched to a new uh, tires. They went to an MX-52 and an MX-3S tire, and they changed the dunce fasteners slightly on the airbox cover to be less likely to grab your uh, pants by accident and turn, uh, turn them and have them actually come loose. I guess there was some issue with some people uh, catching the dunce fasteners and accidentally unlocking the airbox cover. Probably not a great thing to happen while you're riding and they uh, slightly redesigned them here for 2017 to be a little less likely to have that happen. Otherwise, the motorcycle is identical uh, to the year before and uh, no real update in any significant way in terms of performance. 2018 is another big year for the YZF 450. It gets a all new design this year. It's kind of funny. It doesn't look much different aside from visually speaking, the blue rims and the all blue bodywork, which I will say does look much better. You can still see the DNA of the quote-unquote modern YZF there. I'm still not a huge fan of the strange side panel design Yamaha's going for in the shrouds and what have you, but this motorcycle does look better. Uh, again, at first glance, you might think it's not a greatly changed machine over the year before, but once you dig into it, it's actually all new from the ground up. The seat and the tank is much uh, narrower this year. I think it's a full inch narrower at the shrouds, which is a significant improvement. The seat is lower. 
Uh, the gas tank actually went down in size from 1.9 gallons to 1.6 gallons. The seat is lower in the middle and also lower at the back. I'm only 5'8", and these YZs in this generation, man, if you ever try to climb on one, the previous ones were pretty darn tall, even the later ones, but I always thought the machines were a little bit too tall for my taste, and they did make an attempt to make the machine a little uh, easier to handle here in 2018 by lowering the seat 8 millimeters in the middle and a full 19 millimeters in the back. Uh, in addition to the new ergonomics, you have a redesigned airbox. You have a all-new motor uh, this year, which adds electric starting, which is obviously something that uh, people love. I love electric starting. It's hard to go back once you have the magic button. And uh, Yamaha finally went with the uh, KTM crowd here in 2018 by adding that feature to the YZ450. Weight is still pretty hefty compared to like a KTM. The bike is actually really not any heavier than the year before, which is pretty impressive when you consider they added the electric starter to it, but it still comes in at 239 pounds, which is at this point significantly more than what uh, KTM was getting out of their uh, KTM 450s with the electric starter. So it's pretty impressive what uh, the Austrians are able to do with that, but it is a welcome addition. I think most people are usually willing to make that trade to have the convenience of the electric start, especially on a big machine like a 450. Uh, you get a new power tuner app this year that allows you to uh, tune your uh, YZ directly through your iPhone, which is very cool. You need to change the mapping and what have you. You can do that on the fly. Uh, more convenient than having to plug it into a laptop or something. The engine itself has updated cylinder, piston, cam profiles. The cylinder geometry was new. Um, the bike was designed all to give the machine a wider, stronger power band and be a little bit easier to use on the track. Uh, the all-new frame is still the bilateral beam design, the traditional perimeter design, but there are new frame spars, redesigned engine mounts, uh, and they changed the engine mounting position as well. They're always kind of tweaking how the engine sits in the chassis to try and get the best uh, cornering out of the motorcycle and this 2018 design is actually is is a big improvement the bike handles very well the motorcycle in spite of being hefty feels nimbler you know the improved ergonomics make a big difference in that way and while the yz450 is certainly no lightweight you know tiny little machine by any means um, i think it was getting a little bit better uh, incrementally every year over that uh, they still kept the sss suspension yamaha was smart they never did go to the air fork uh, trend as far as this goes and kept what worked. It's pretty amazing when you think about this basic design with tweaks, obviously, year in and year out. Dates back to 2006. And uh, usually you think, oh, you're still using something from, you know, 2006, 12 years old to be outdated. But they really got this uh, suspension working in the first place. And uh, Yamaha, to their credit, has kept it going all this time. You do get a new white version this year. I don't really care for this as much. I think the uh, the white and red somehow looks a little better than this white and baby blue. It's kind of a weird look. Uh, not as much of a fan of that overall graphic design, but did give you something different to choose. And you could get the black rims with this if you weren't a fan of the blue rims, which actually I'm not much of a fan of. So they look kind of cheese ball. Um, you could get the white version here and have the uh, black rims on the bike. Overall, a significant improvement and a major update for the YZ450F. And I think uh, definitely a better machine in pretty much every way. 2019 is not a big year for updates on the YZ450F. It is essentially a minorly tweaked 2018. Uh, you do get updated suspension settings for improved feel and traction, according to Yamaha here for 2019. They did revise the front fork lugs and axle brackets for improved rigidity and improved front end feel. They redesigned the front and rear wheel collars for improved traction. And they updated the starter system to reduce drag and horsepower loss. Uh, there is a slight increase in seat foam density, which was a welcome change because when they redesigned the bike in 2018, the seat was much thinner. And some people had complained that it was basically like sitting on one inch of foam on top of a hard rock. And <laughs> that was probably not the best feel. So they did make the seat foam a little denser here for 2019. And you get a, a blue valve train cover, which is uber trick. Uh, you have the Team Yamaha Blue and white color schemes are still around here for 2019. Other than that, it's basically the exact same machine it was in 2018, which was a good bike. So that's probably not such a bad thing. Usually when a manufacturer makes a major update, uh, you can tell it just to look at it. But this 2020 YZF450 actually looks almost identical to the year before, but underneath that same old appearance is an all-new motorcycle, pretty much. Uh, they totally redesigned the engine this year in 2020. It gets an all-new top end, which was narrower overall. You have a more compact cylinder head, a redesigned combustion chamber. They steepen the valve angles inside the head and have more aggressive cam profiles. 
There's a higher compression piston inside the motor and lower friction rings as well as a longer connecting rod. The transmission has been refined uh, to provide smoother shifting this year and there's a more efficient uh, crank breather system as well designed to decrease pumping losses of the motor. Uh, the frame is new this year as well. They tweaked everything from the motor mounts once again to the frame spar thickness in several places. At first glance, it really does look the same, uh, but there's a lot of stuff that Yamaha did in 2020 here to try and improve the performance uh, of the motorcycle. The seat foam was, again, stiffened slightly. As I said the year before, this seat was not uh, well loved by most people, um, and they added another 10% stiffer uh, seat foam here in uh, 2020 to try and increase rider comfort. Um, overall, the bike was definitely improved this year. Uh, the motor ran excellently. These bikes are great running machines, excellent suspension, and the handling changes they made, I think, here in 2020 uh, were generally well-liked. They stiffened up the back of the chassis slightly and uh, softened up the front, and it resulted in a machine that cornered better and was an excellent handler overall. The bike still is quite hefty. It actually is one of the heavier machines in the 450 class at this point, um, and it does still feel taller and wider than most of its competition but the bike is excellently reviewed by most of the magazines. Uh, I think if you're a small guy, maybe the bike was maybe not the best fit, but if you're a larger, stronger, heavier rider, uh, the YZ450F was probably a great fit for you. For 2021, Yamaha focused its efforts on the 250 class with the YZ250F getting most of the updates that the 450 had got in 2020. And the 450, unfortunately, was basically a carryover model. Uh, there are no updates that I'm aware of here for 21 other than a new alternate appearance, which was a Monster Energy-based uh, Yamaha. Me, personally, now a giant fan of the Monster Energy look on any motorcycles, uh, and I don't like this black very much. Interestingly, this is a purely cosmetic update. It's not like the factory edition KTMs or the, like the Roxxon edition uh, Hondas. It's a purely cosmetic update. There's no aftermarket exhaust or upgraded engine or any of that stuff like there is in some of the competition. It just gives the bike a little different appearance. So this year you could get uh, the YZ in blue or blue and black. Uh, me personally, I'm definitely going with the blue, but I'm sure there's plenty of uh, claw aficionados out there that opted for the monster version. For 2022, we get a very mild update on the YZ450F. Uh, the only mechanical changes are a new hub, and that was done to lighten the weight slightly, 28 grams lighter. They also lighten the rear sprocket and chain slightly here for 2022. Otherwise, mechanically, it's exactly the same as it was the year before. Appearance-wise, I do really like the blue. I think the blue is actually a little bit deeper. At least it looks that way in photographs, and I like the fact that they made the side panels blue. I think it kind of draws the overall design of the bodywork together a little better. As I said earlier, I'm not a giant fan of this bodywork in general, but I think making it all this dark blue does make it look a little better overall. There's still a Monster Energy version you can get here in 2022, which uh, may or may not be your cup of uh, energy drink, but in general, it's basically the same exact machine it was the year before, and still an excellent, excellent uh, 450 motocross machine. So there you have it. That's a brief look back at the history of Yamaha's four-stroke open-class racers from 1998 through 2022. Yamaha was certainly the manufacturer that kicked off the modern four-stroke revolution, for better or worse. Uh, they weren't the first there. Obviously, you had Husqvarna, Husaberg, KTM even had some uh, racing four-strokes prior to that. But really, it was the YZ400F that kind of brought the four-stroke motocross bike into the mainstream. And certainly, they've been a pioneer all along the way, even up to now, where they're the only manufacturer with the reverse engine design, which certainly has produced a lot of power. Maybe been a little more controversial in other ways, but the Yamaha's not afraid to push the envelope, and they were really, really innovative with this design. Uh, I know when I first got one, I loved it. It was a cool bike in spite of being like a tank. <laughs> it was a really neat machine and unique, and I certainly wasn't alone. They sold so many of those original YZ400Fs. Uh, there has been a great machine over the years. It continues to be one of the best machines in the four-stroke class to this very day, and I'm sure Yamaha will continue to push the envelope forward in the future. If you like this sort of thing, make sure you check out some of the other videos I've done. I've done retrospectives on the CR500, the CR250, the Honda CR80, uh, Kawasaki KDX, all kinds of different ones, and including individual reviews as well. If you could share, uh, tweet it out, put it on social media, let your friends know about the channel. I would very much appreciate the support as well. And until we meet again, this is Tony Blades for the Motocross Vault. Keep the rubber side down. Peace.